News 8 continues to honor Black History Month. In Rochester, there's a, the Archive Project for what's considered the longest-running black newspaper here in the state, the Frederick Douglass Voice. Civil rights champion Howard Coles began publishing the paper back in 1933. Joan Coles Howard says it was her father's desire to counteract the negative narratives published in other outlets. Teresa Marsenberg has that story. It highlighted our accomplishments. He wouldn't print it if it was negative. For six decades, the Frederick Douglass Voice, also known as the Rochester Voice, chronicled the lives of African Americans. Howard Coles, a well-known civil rights leader in the 20th century, was inspired by the famous abolitionist, orator, author, and Rochester resident of the 19th century, Frederick Douglass. He tried to follow in Douglass's footsteps. His daughter, Joan Coles Howard, says Coles borrowed money from his life insurance policy to begin publishing The Voice in 1933. Sometimes. <laughs> Uh, sometimes it was um, every couple of weeks. Sometimes it was dependent upon um, how much time and how much money mm -hmm. he had. In addition to the society news and entertainment, the paper included pressing issues of the day involving housing and employment inequalities. Joan remembers wanting to write about the civil unrest in the 60s. When her dad objected, she and other members of her family started their own paper, The Black Dispatch. But they couldn't get enough advertisers to sustain it. She says her dad didn't have to utter the words, I told you so. <laughs> he had a way of looking at <laughs> A way of looking at you. That said it all. You didn't have to say anything. Coles took over as editor of The Voice in 1990, updating the layout and increasing the volume of the paper. At its height, 10,000 issues were printed for subscribers. I used to work on it in the evenings and at night, and um, I would lay down next to the computer <laughs> and take a quick nap. Joan served as editor until its final publication in 1996, the same year her father Howard Coles died at 93. I'm always feeling him tapping me on my shoulder when it's time for me to do or say or, okay, Daddy, I got it. In 1999, Joan donated the papers, photos, typewriter, and other materials from her father's collection to the Rochester Museum and Science Center. I wanted it to live forever. Um, since he couldn't. To make the papers more accessible, they're being digitized and archived locally at the museum, the Rochester Public Library, and as part of the New York State Historic Newspapers. And if there's nothing like this, how do you find it? And it's important. You need to know where you came from. Great history there, great reporting as well from Teresa Marsenberg. Journalists, historians, and most recently, students at Teen Empowerment have all used the collection to help inform, create, and preserve the history of this city's African-American community.